professor at Tehran University. Welcome back to the program, Professor. This is uh, the second execution linked to the nearly three-month wave of anti-government protests. Are these demonstrators getting a fair trial? There are a couple of things that need to be unpacked here. One is that the person who was executed this morning, it would have been more appropriate if you had shown the clip uh, on your show. He stabbed two people to death. One uh, was stab stabbed multiple times, and the second was stabbed in the throat. And these two young men died on the scene. And since capital punishment exists in Iran, he was uh, executed for murdering these two young volunteers who were policing the streets of the holy city of Mashhad. Uh, so this is not a protester. This is a terrorist who was a part of the rioters. Uh, the, the only protests that we saw were during the two, three days after the uh, demise of Mahsa Amini. And the reason why they protested was because Western Persian media initially claimed that she was tortured and beaten to death. Even I thought that was probably true. And then it came out that she wasn't. The footage showed that she was unharmed. It showed that she was not handcuffed. And it showed that she collapsed at a police station. And, and it later came out that she had a major brain surgery uh, when she was younger. So um, I think this, um, the way in which Iran has been represented in the rest, in the West, has more to do with Western hostility towards Iran. And of course, their support for the rioters is very clear to everyone here in Iran. And Professor, there were reports last week that Iran's parliament and judiciary may be reviewing the country's hijab law and even uh, the country's morality police. Is there any truth to that? And can we expect any changes to either of those? I don't know about any change in the law. Uh, according to polls in Iran, overwhelmingly uh, people in Iran, including women, uh, support the enforcement of hijab in the public sphere. And the Iranian culture is very different from Western culture because they believe that uh, the commodification, the sexualization, the objectification of women in the West is, uh, uh, is inappropriate for Iranian culture. So that is a different debate. But what I would like to point out here is that uh, what we've seen uh, during the riots, and the riots have ended weeks ago. We, there are no riots. I am on the University of Tehran campus as we speak. There are no riots. Uh, but the West likes to create this image of some sort of unstable Iran. Iran was never unstable during, the, during those uh, weeks of riots. But, what I but the important thing is that these riots were carried out by the MEK terrorist organization that's based in NATO countries. It has its central military headquarters in Albania. Uh, the MEK claims responsibility for the activities and the riots in Iran. And this is a terrorist organization that fought for Saddam Hussein during his invasion of Iran and who killed 17,000 Iranians in terrorist attacks. So they are admitting their involvement in the riots, but Western countries are supporting and funding them. And well over 60, 60 police officers were murdered in the riots, in, including two that were murdered by the person who was ex executed today. But this is not something that you're going to hear in the Western media. And the Persian language media in London and in the West that is funded by Western countries and Saudi Arabia are actually calling on people to carry out attacks to kill police officers, to burn them alive, and this is something that Ofcom is doing nothing about. Okay, Professor Mohammed Mirandi, we will have to leave it there, but really good to get your thoughts as always. Thank you. Thank you.